Hello everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red. So today we're going to tackle Victory Road. Ta da! Um, so I think I should somewhat apologize for last episode. It really wasn't very good quality towards the end there. Um, not so much because of my commentary. I mean, it might not be interesting for everyone, but I don't think it was like terrible. But um, in future. Those really long ledge fights with legendaries. Um, I don't think I've got any more of them coming up actually. Uh, I'll just run away from this Geodude. I'll, I'll level up my Pokemon eventually, but not right now. Um, but yeah, in future, if, I, if it's just going to be 30, 40 turns of me throwing balls at it, I am going to cut that uh, and just take you with me once I've, once I've caught it. Um, so we do get Golbat here. Uh, and some other evolved Pokemon at fairly high levels. Um, obviously, this is up to this point the hardest dungeon in the game. Simply because, well, it's kind of the end game. Except with the additional content in this game, it's no longer really the end game. Um, well, that was a crit. It sucks. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i okay with having talked about the whole YouTuber thing, I might even continue talking about it, because it's just being a YouTuber myself. Um, it's a topic that's close to my heart, even though the particular issues that come with being famous on YouTube and making that your job, um, they don't affect me because I'm not doing that. I'm not even partnered, I'm not making a single cent of YouTube, I couldn't, I mean, possibly a single cent, but that's about it. I'm tiny. No one actually watches my videos, so um, there would be no point. And I don't think the content I make is professional enough. Anyway, I'm, I'm hoping some people enjoy it and maybe get a kick out of it, but I do not believe that the, the kind of videos I do would be able to make enough money. I mean, Partially because I focus heavily on the games and um, have a very sort of meticulous and I think on occasion very boring playstyle. But it's just the way I play. I don't want to um, force myself to play a different way than I usually would, just in order to get more views. Uh, I don't. I don't care that much. Let's see what Rock Smash actually does. I know it's a fairly weak attack. Yeah. Might as well not. I guess. So let's just run away. Um. I meant to say something. Again, I could kill this Onyx using different Pokemon, but um, I'll just stick to using whatever's next in line, and if that doesn't have a good attack against a Pokemon, a wild one, I'll just run away. But, yeah, I mean, especially with that, I, I don't want to name anyone in particular. Probably wouldn't matter because my viewers are mostly English, but again, don't want to refer to anyone in, uh, in particular, but it seems to me to be a very silly decision or um, it's sort of the easy way. I mean, if you really want to, if I really wanted to even, it wouldn't be difficult to make money off of YouTube. It's just a matter of knowing uh, knowing what kind of content people like to see, or rather what content kids really want to see. Because when you're making money off YouTube, it's not you're not really getting money per click. You're making money off the advertisements that you run on your videos, or that YouTube puts on your videos. So you basically get a share of the, of the ad revenue. The, uh, the problem is that you're not really getting anything if your viewers use adblock which well I, mean, I use adblock most people do the problem is that uh, the older people get the more likely they are apparently to use adblock um, so you get the most money from your viewers 
if they're really young, because the young ones are less likely to have adblock installed and use it. Because they don't know about it, they don't know how to install it, they're not as tech savvy. But my audience, according to at least uh, the Google Analytics, I've got a very small percentage of viewers who are be who are under 18 and a fairly large sort of 25 to 36 segment. And um, I would expect a lot of these viewers use Adblock um, because even though I don't put ads on my videos or rather I don't make any money of ads on my videos and I have disabled them mostly. Um, yeah, they should actually be disabled, but YouTube still puts ads on them. There's nothing you can really do about that. Uh, I can only get one of these items. I know one of them's TM2. Dragon Claw. The other one I think is a rag handy. Um, no, I can get the other one eventually, but just not right now. So let's just run away. But, um... Yeah, but that means if you really want to make money uh, on YouTube, you kind of have to cater to the young crowd, because that's where you get the most money per view, I guess. Because there you have the lowest chance of them using ad blocks, so each individual viewer gets you basically... It's a higher chance of actually getting you money. And unfortunately, that means if you really want to be successful, or... It's not the only way to be successful, but it's the most certain way, it's the easiest way. It's to cater to those really young people. The kind of people that are impressed by all the shallow life that you share. Like, look, this is my new girlfriend. Well, they're 12, they don't have one, they're, they think that's impressive. Anyone who's a little older sees that, well, yeah, she is after your money, and you might have sex, but you don't actually love each other. Or you, maybe you love her, but she definitely doesn't love you, you can see that. But the young kids, they don't realize that. So to them, it's like, oh, he's so cool, he's got a girlfriend. Whereas, you know, if you're getting into my age, I'm like 24 now, and or even older, it's like, let's say, you're getting married, or you've got a fiancé, or you've got at least a steady relationship, then, you know, with someone else having a girlfriend, it's no longer impressive. And instead you notice, oh, I actually meant to change Pokemon, oh well. And you notice that, yeah, fine, he's actually got a relationship, but it's more like quote-unquote relationship, it's not real, it's just for show. Whereas the young guys, well... They just see, oh, girlfriend, oh, I really want one as well, oh, he's got one, he must be really cool, and look, he's got a sports car! Yeah, well, fair enough. It's just, I mean, a lot of guys still really like sports cars, I never really got into the whole car thing, it's just not for me, I guess, but... I know a lot of older, older, well, quote-unquote older, like, not, we're not talking 50 plus, we're talking 25 plus. <laughs> Um, they're still really into sports cars, and especially they're at a point in their life where they could afford one, maybe, some of them. Um, oh, you actually have a Charizard, nice. Unfortunately, I have a Hydro Pump. Um, but they're not as impressed by a 20-year-old having one, so it just, the content isn't catered for them. The content is specifically catered for young minds, because they are where the money's at. They have the most time to spend on YouTube, because they don't have much schoolwork yet, they don't have real work yet, they don't have university, anything like that. They can spend almost their entire afternoons watching YouTube videos, and they are much easier to manipulate into kind of being hardcore fanboys or fangirls, which means it's much easier to get them to watch anything you do, regardless of what it is. Again, easy money. But it just leads to very shallow content, I find. And I don't want to generalize this too much. So I don't want to leave the impression that I think every big YouTuber, YouTuber is like that. There are some who aren't. Um, you will notice that a lot of the really successful ones cater to a young audience. But not all of them and not all the time. Um, and it's fine making the occasional video for like kids. That's fine. And again, not all of them are like that. Some of them are definitely mature content, which is actually interesting. 
Um, like, I don't really watch much YouTube these days, mostly just LPs. But again, not screaming face cam kid LPs, but you know, slightly more mature stuff. Which, I mean, I'm a very reserved and sort of traditional character. Like, for example, I, I try really hard not to swear in my videos, I try to um, not scream and not be like, oh wow, look at this! Oh, ah! I hate that. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about your earphones. Um, I I really try to avoid that stuff, and I the LPs I watch. Uh, well, I don't watch guys that do that. If they start doing that, I stop watching them basically. But again, apparently that shows emotional engagement and makes for more interesting content, which I have no idea why people think that. And I am aware my analytics and well, my, the fact that I get five views per video or so. They tell me that my content is not what people want to see, or not what lots of people want to see. And also, I'm not really advertising anyway. So, it is to be expected. But, yeah, that's really all I view, watch these days, but there were some YouTubers I, I used to watch, like this. The, um, I used to kind of like those epic rap battle of history things, but then they just did some which were just meh, kind of tedious and just again it felt like they were catering too much to my mind at least to just popular opinion really, which I know that sounds like a really hipster thing to say. And I'm definitely not a hipster. <laughs> um, I was a hipster before it was... Wait, what? Um, now, the the point is... Um, I dislike some things that are mainstream, but not because they're mainstream. I also like a lot of things that are mainstream. Um, for example, I really love the new Avengers movie. Mm. Not the quite new one. The... So just the Avengers, not Age of Ultron, I've not seen that one. Um, reason why I haven't seen it? I'm not happy with Disney. They make some good movies. But they're also greedy assholes. <laughs> and, um, I know it's somewhat childish, I guess, but... Um, it feels like they're screwing a lot of people out of their money. Well, not really by cheating them out of it, it's just... I don't know... When I was younger I didn't notice it was uh, it as much, it was just kind of kids TV and kids movies that Disney mostly did, but... There's also the gigantic amount of toys they sell, which, well... My parents never bought us that stuff, which I know at the time I resented them for it because, you know, oh, all the other kids have those cool toys, I want them as well, but um, to be honest, these days I realize that it was the right thing to do. And it's just, it's weird. When you're young, like, so if you know, teenager, 14, 16, those, those age groups, you really dislike your parents a lot of the time for, well, their decisions, you know, they think they don't, you think they don't understand you, and it's really important for you to have this, have this latest toy or this, this latest computer game or whatever, and they're just not buy, buying it for you, even though they have the money, and just, it's frustrating at that age, but I'm now at a point where I've come to realize that, yeah, that's true, they didn't buy all that stuff for me, but they're my parents, they really did what they think was best, and as much as it's difficult to admit sometimes, most of the time they were right. Like, most of the time. Like, sometimes some things would not have been bad, you know. But it's. I remember thinking when I was like 16, 18, um, being really jealous of my friends because they had those. You know, portable game consoles, Game Boy, PlayStation Portable, all that stuff. And our parents never bought us that stuff. But, I mean, I guess if we 
had been more insistent, we might have gotten them, but we never got it. If we had wanted that, we would have had to save our uh, pocket money for like a year and buy it, because we never got much of it. Um, which is fine, again, it's, it's not... It... All we had our pocket money for was buying stuff for ourselves for fun. Like, all our food, all our clothing, all, everything else our parents bought for us and pretty much spared no expense, but the, 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 the pocket money thing was really just for, you know, personal enjoyment. Ooh, sandstorm. Yay. Sucky attack. I don't want to use it. Um... So, yeah, I guess the point is, I'm now at a point in my life where I realize that they really did mean for the best and mostly it worked out, basically. Um, I, I know a lot of younger people resent their parents because they think that being suppressed by them, because, you know, you just don't understand what it's like to be young. Well, they were young once. They've been through the exact same thing. Um, and just because they were young 30 years ago or so, or whatever it happens to be for your parents, doesn't mean that they were any different at that age than you are now. Or you were then, I guess. I don't know. I don't know the age of my audience that well. Like, I know the general distribution of age, maybe. But I have no way of knowing whether you, the one currently listening to me, are 18 or 16 or 25 or 35. If you like, head to the comment section and tell me, I guess. But, um, yeah, I I was actually very lucky. Uh, my parents were, or still are, still are great and supportive and um, just really good parents to have as... Um, as opposed to my opinion when I was 17, when I thought other parents were so much cooler. Hmm. Even though I never thought that much, I guess. Like, there were occasions, but mostly... Mostly I was always okay, but then I'm... I don't like to complain about things. But not to people in person. Uh, I don't mind complaining <laughs> when there's sort of no, no backlash from it, really. Which I know sounds kind of weak, but... I complain when something really bothers me, but in most situations, I'd rather just deal with the situation than moan about it. Um, like, I don't know, especially when I was slightly younger and my, both my siblings were still at home, It's oh, it, it was often a matter of, there was some bit of housework to be done and they didn't do it, so I ended up doing it a lot, and, um... It it was a bit annoying at times that they never did any of it, but aside from telling them to do it and then they didn't do it and then I would have to do it, I couldn't really do anything about it. I mean, they didn't do it, so what was I to do? Hey, good dude. Um, and that's obviously slightly less now, but I mean, they've also gotten older and slightly wiser at times. Um. I strayed pretty far from my original point, didn't I? I know I started out talking about YouTubers being fake. And then, yeah, oh yeah, I was talking about the kind of stuff I watch, but... I don't like the content that's catered for your very young viewers, basically. Mostly because I am no longer a really young viewer. And content that's catered or that's designed to appeal to a 12-year-old just doesn't appeal to me anymore. I mean. I have my childish side, definitely, at times. Um, I mean, I make poop jokes. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with that, but... Um, I don't think it's a high form of humor. If you do such stuff like that on occasion, you know, it can be funny once, maybe twice, but... I have watched a, an, a someone doing an LP of um, Borderlands 2, and he was using the Psycho class. 
think I'll just run away. Um, and there's an introduction video or sort of trailer for when they released the Psycho class, which was um, it involved the sort of Psycho, the playable character, at one point screaming, "I'm the conductor of the poop train," which, in the context of the video, was just funny because he's completely mad, or he, he's got like he's got a second personality, which is submissive, I guess, but. Uh, like the sane bit of him is still in his head as a kind of talking voice. Talking voice, wow. As a voice in his head. But the dominant part of his personality is just the completely insane and mad one. Goodbye, Mr. Mime. Um. And I guess if you want to watch the exact video, just Google for Meat Bicycle Built for Two. Or YouTube for it, I guess. And uh, you'll you'll find what I'm looking, what I'm, what I mean. Anyway, at one point he's hiding behind a rock while someone's shooting at him, screaming, "I'm the conductor of the poop train," which you know at that point it's funny. He's kind of the the sane bit of him sees that beautiful woman and it's like, "Oh, she's super hot and she's super smart and just look at her, she's really powerful." And talk to her and make her help you, make her make you sane again. And the guy just yells about the poop train, and it's just, haha, it's funny. It actually is funny. Um, but that LP here, he thought that was funny too, but he was about 16 or so. Unfortunately, the, the, the first video of that LP, it was kind of tame-ish, so it was okay to watch. So I thought, hey, this is okay, I can watch this, and he was playing as the psycho, I think. Well, he was playing as the, as the psycho. Um... So I think I just decided that, well, you know, he's he's kind of young, but it, it seems watchable. Um, so I decided to watch it. Anyway. Um, but then, I think between his second and third episode, he apparently also watched that video because someone in the comments suggested it, because apparently he didn't know it yet. And he found that line quite funny as well. Only he is of the opinion, or lots of young people are of the opinion apparently, that if you repeat a joke often enough, it gets even more funny. So, he started doing the conductor of the poop train joke about once every two minutes. And it got old really fast, about after the first time. And by the second time, it was already annoying. And by the third time I stopped watching him. Well, not quite, but... I think I watched one more episode, and in those 20 or so minutes, he made the poop train joke about five or six times. Yeah. It's... It seems to be all of that hunting for the next big hype. Hunting for the next thing to go viral. And... Things go viral pretty much by themselves, and I really dislike when people try to force it, when people think, oh, this is gonna be the next thing that goes hype, or that goes viral, or whatever. And it's all just so short-lived these days. Um, there were hypes, always. I mean, it's normal, and they're always short-lived. Again, this is normal. Like, I know when the Rubik's Cubes first came out, you know, those little puzzle cube things, so... I mean, you should still know what a Rubik's Cube is, for heaven's sake. If you don't, go away and Google it, for heaven's sake. Why am I explaining that? Anyway, um... When they first came out, they were, um... They were popular and f sort of famous for a... Maybe a year or two. But again, it was sort of a... Momentary craze that went away quite quickly, um... And that's just the nature of, of what life is like, I guess. Um, how you... Only with the internet having sort of really increased the pace of these things, it seems that the new crazes only last, sometimes only last a week or two, like... Back when I was younger, I used to read this whole meme base and stuff. 
quite a bit. And there were always these new memes, which, oh, this is the funniest meme ever, oh, this was so legendary. And really, it can't be legendary if it started out two days ago, and if three days later no one remembers it anymore. Like, a lot of music, or new bands or whatever. Oh, this is such a cool band, and it's like the best band ever, and... A year later, the next band has shown up, and oh, this is now the best band ever. I'm saying, I'm not saying that that's specific to our generation. I'm, I think that's always happened. The risk, I guess, is that you um, I'm confused. As an Articuno is confused. Let's go to Chariots Art. Um. And the spikes will hurt me, I know. Or not. Oh, 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 oh. No, actually, I think that should be fine. I thought I'm a dragon and that's nice attack, but I'm... I, it's a dragon, but it's not dragon type, so I'm actually okay. Uh, let's wing attack. But it should have really good defensive value, so that's not gonna do much here. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, you now look at music from from ages gone past, I guess. Like, you could look at classical music and the big composers, sort of, the really good ones. They survived, and their music is still being played today, and... Um, it's, it seems obvious, thinking about it, that, well, back in those days, there were a lot of pretty bad composers, too, or at least not legendary ones, which maybe back in the day people thought, oh, this guy's really good, this will really sort of last, but then it didn't. But of course, nowadays we don't hear about them anymore because, well, they didn't last, their names are now mostly forgotten. Whereas, um... In the day and age we live in now, like, currently, we get to hear all those sort of average or kind of good, but not really good composers or bands or music groups or whatever. And there seems to be a big desire among people to sort of say, oh, this will be the big thing. But really, the only test there is, is the test of time. Um, it, it seems impossible to predict whether a certain style of music or a certain group will be... Uh, will be famous, or will make it, quote-unquote. I seem to recall there was this, sort of, I think, Korean pop guy who did the Gangnam Style video, which was a really crazy hype for a while. You couldn't escape that song. Um, and people, or, or a lot of people, especially uh, a lot of those, I, I watched a YouTuber Thing where a bunch of big YouTubers basically ps ps talked about that music video, the, the style of music and all that. Um, I think... I don't know if I want to go down here. I don't believe so. I don't mind if I skip bits of the dungeon, by the way. I just want to go through it somewhat swiftly, so... Yeah. I'll just... This, uh... The boulder I just pushed has unlocked the path, which I'm now going. Uh, it, it would have otherwise been blocked at some point. Um, and they all said that, oh yeah, Korean pop is really big and it's it's going to be the next big thing because it's just so addictive and cool, when really there was that one music video song, which apparently was addictive and cool. I don't quite get it, but okay, fair enough. Apparently people really like the Gangnam Style thing. Um, but then... Yeah, we're still listening to music that's not Korean pop. Quite a bit. In fact, it's been a while since I heard Korean, heard Korean pop on the radio. Maybe I'm watching the, uh, I'm listening to the wrong uh, stations, but you never know. But yeah, it seems like, especially with the young YouTubers, they're all trying to be the next hype thing. And 
To my mind, it just it just makes for bad content. I know I'm ranting a lot about this, but the reason I'm so annoyed by it, to be honest, is that for some reason the suggested videos on YouTube, which usually they're, they're meant to be designed to cater to your sort of viewing history. So it used to be that a lot of the time... Cosmic power? Huh. Defense rows, special defense rows. I don't particularly care. Okay, use a full restore. Again, I don't particularly care. Um. So yeah, because what I mostly watch on YouTube is sort of gaming related stuff. You know what, I'm just gonna ice beam you. I don't care anymore. Um, I mostly would get video suggestions along those lines, like sometimes reviews of new technology or reviews of games or let's plays of games, because that's mostly what I watch on YouTube. Sometimes a bit of music, but that's about it. Um, and at some point it apparently decided that what I really wanted was sort of vloggers and big German LPs under the age of 20 or something. Because I kept suggesting those videos, which... The video titles tend to be all capital letters to draw attention, and there's the guy's face plastered all over the thumbnail, because it's not as much about the game as it is about him, it's kind of a personality cult being developed. But... I still find it really annoying. Um, let's go Gyarados, why not? And so I've just seen that stuff a lot, and on occasion, you know, you click on the video because you think, oh, this might actually be interesting. Um, well, actually, I've stopped doing that. I've done it about three times, and every single time it wasn't interesting. Just silly, I guess. Um, Shenzhou, well, we can go back to Articuno for that. But yeah, I've had a fair amount of contact with that sort of stuff. And, um, I've kind of mentioned it. The one I found really impressive was a guy showing his new girlfriend in his new flat. Which apparently, the reason he had the girlfriend was because he had the big flat. Anyway. Um, the funniest thing was actually that she had her own bedroom, so she did not share his bed. I mean, I suspect that the amount of money she's costing him, not as a prostitute kind of thing, but as a, she's an expensive girlfriend, she wants him to take her shopping and such. I mean, I would expect her to put out, but still, just, like, imagine you're with a girlfriend, like, you're living together in the same flat, and you yourself have a big double bed, but she still sleeps in a different room. I mean, I suspect you're gonna have sex in the same room, but still, it's just, I found this so hilarious. Anyway, uh, it was just, you know, the thumbnail was just mostly her face and she was kind of pretty. So I thought, hey, let's watch this, see what he's talking about. You know, I mean, I'm a guy, if I see a pretty face, I wanna know more. Um, and he was just like talking about her, you know, this is my new girlfriend. Again, not gonna go into details about names or such. I'd... I wanna complain about the general state of things, um, but just in case in 20 years when I'm really famous and that guy's still really famous, I don't want guys heading over there and hating or whatever. Um, plus, I don't remember the guy's name. Didn't seem that interesting to me. Anyway, um, it was just, it was hilarious to watch because it very much seemed like he only had the girlfriend to impress others, and she only had him because he could afford to buy her 200 euro shoes every week. Which is fine, I guess, I mean, that's the way you want to play it. But he was struggling to fill a five minute video with talk about his girlfriend. Which, I mean, I guess he's young and sort of stupid, but... I've had a few girlfriends, 
and if someone asked me to talk about them, I would like them enough that I would be able to talk for 10 minutes about the things I like about them, or I did like about them, or um, things that made me love them, or the things that, I guess at this point, the, the reasons why it didn't work out, anything like that. It's just, um, I should probably wake up using a uh, something. Uh, I'm just going to use the poker flute because it does it has infinite uses. It also wakes up the enemy Pokemon, but it's not asleep, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it, it just... It's a testament to the shallowness of their relationship that he was unable, or he was struggling to fill five minutes with information about her. When, well, you would think she's your girlfriend, you should know about her. I mean, I guess at the point it was kind of his new girlfriend, but still, five minutes? That's not that long to talk about a person you apparently like enough to want to share your life with her. At least, for the moment, I mean... I'm guessing that most people who have a relationship at that age are not thinking about, you know, the really long term, like eventually getting married and having children. I don't think that's really much of a concern for them, but still, I mean, if someone's your girlfriend, you should at least assume it's gonna last a while, otherwise what's the point? Might as well have a one-night stand if that's all you're looking for, right? It... I don't know. It just... That particular video really stuck to my mind. I didn't even look at what he's gonna send out next time. Um... It's being just so phony and... What annoyed me about it wasn't so much the fact that it was kind of phony. I mean, fair enough. But... It had, like, half a million views and 50,000 likes or something crazy. And that was for a guy showing us a woman that clearly would rather be with a different guy, but the other guy is not rich enough. I mean, what's the point? And why are people watching it? That's what I find the, the most annoying. Or, hmm. The most frustrating, maybe. Oh, my voice, my voice. Ooh, uh, I am your father. Whatever. Um, just the notion that that's apparently what people want to see? I mean, I think I would get more attention if I shoved my face into a webcam. And shoved my girlfriend's face into a webcam. Possibly different bits of her. Um, I shall save the game here. And see you next time. So I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye.